Today we're going to be naming ionic and covalent compounds. So first of all, everyone should just get comfortable with the periodic table where the charges are, so the charges of these first two blocks, how the D block elements have can have multiple charges, and the charges of the nonmetals, and of course the placement of the metals and the nonmetals over here. So ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are between a metal, so something from here, and a nonmetal, so something from there. And we need a net charge of zero. So let's take one metal, like sodium, and one nonmetal, like oxygen, and we look at sodium's charge, it's plus one. But if we look at oxygen's charge, it's negative two. Now, we need that plus one and negative two to balance each other out. Right now, they don't. But if we make, if we have two of sodiums, then two times plus one obviously becomes plus two, and that plus two cancels out the negative two. So that would be uh, balancing it out and have, getting a net charge of zero, our compound would be Na2O. And then, <clears throat> so we're looking at the position and charge of the element's position as in where it is, like as a nonmetal, and then charge what its charge is. And if it's a D block element, we're going to find its charge because obviously it has multiple charges and we're going to find that charge by balancing its charge with the nonmetal that it um, interacts with. So, for instance, let's take let's take iron, iron and oxygen. Um, if there's a compound where it's just FeO, so there's one of iron and there's one of oxygen. Now we have to balance both parts of this compound out. We know that oxygen has a charge of negative two, and there's only one iron needed to balance that negative two out. So we know iron charge has to be positive two. All right, so now let's get into formulas. So for non-D block elements, so or metal, sorry. <clears throat> so over here, it's just going to be the metal and then the non-metal with its ending change to ide. So let's look at, let's go back to our sodium and oxygen example. It'll be sodium oxide. And now if we look for D block elements, we're gonna take our metal, so iron, the D block charge will be in Roman numerals. So remember iron with oxygen, it's gonna have a positive two charge if it balances each other out with just one of each. So it'll be iron and then in Roman numerals two oxide, because we have to change that oxygen to an ide. All right, let's look at some examples. So beryllium and then oxygen. Beryllium has a charge of positive two, oxygen has a charge of negative two, so they already cancel each other out. And we know that if we look at our formula, it's gonna be metal plus non-metal with its ending change to ide. So it's gonna be beryllium oxide. Now, if we look at iron again and chlorine, chlorine has a charge of negative one. That's only one of chlorine. Here in this compound, we're dealing with three of them. So three times negative one is negative three. This whole part of the compound, its charge is negative three. And we have only one of iron that actually balances out that entirely. So we know automatically to balance out a negative three, we need a positive three. And that's what iron's charge is here because it can have multiple charges as, as mentioned. So it'll be iron and then in Roman numerals, three, chloride because we have to change that ending to ide and let's look at lithium and oxygen we have lithium over here and we have oxygen over here and they balance each other out because there's two of lithium so plus two and then negative two and we just need the metal so lithium and the non-metal with its ending change to ide and as we've seen before here so lithium oxide now if we have kcl so k is potassium potassium has a charge of plus one chlorine has a charge of negative one and just take the metal so potassium and take the non-metal with its ending change to ide, so potassium chloride. So now we're going to name covalent compounds. Covalent compounds are between two non-metals, and there's going to be prefix. So instead of focusing on the charge now, we're going to focus on the amount of those elements within the compound. So we're going to have prefixes for both the parts, and that depends on the amount of each, of each element there is in the compound. But an important exception is that there's no mono for the first non-metal. So let's say we have a non-metal, which there's only one of it, and then there's four of the other non-metal, and they're in a compound. Because there's only one of that first non-metal, we don't, we don't say mono and then the non-metal. It's just going to be that non-metal's name as it is. And then this one will have to have the prefix of four, so tetra, whatever that non-metal is with its ending in i, because the second will always have a prefix. 
So let's look at some examples. We have carbon and we have oxygen. Carbon, there's only one of it. And again, there's no mono if there's only one in the first part of this compound. So it's just going to be carbon. But there is two of oxygen. And di is the prefix for that. So it'll be carbon dioxide. And for, um, for this one, so carbon and chlorine, we have one of chlorine, or one of, sorry, one of carbon, so there's no mono for that. It'll just be carbon. But there's four of chlorine, so it'll be tetrachloride. Remembering, remem um, sorry, remember to change the ending to ide. So it'll be carbon tetrachloride. And we have nitrogen and bromine. So there's only one of nitrogen. We're not going to make, we're not going to change that to mono nitrogen or anything. It'll just be nitrogen. Nitrogen and then three of bromine, so it's going to be tribromide, changing the ending, so nitrogen tribromide. Now we have something where there's more of one um, of that first element, and that's super important because now we definitely do need a prefix, and that's why this one is not bolded, but this one is because we still would put a prefix if there's more than one, but not all the time there is more than one. So if we look at boron, there's two of boron, the prefix for that is di, so it'll be diboron, and there's six of hydrogen, so hexahydride, because we have to change that ending. And that's really all there is to naming these compounds.